Yet again, we have an Ant-Man movie coming hot on the heels of an Avengers movie. This one being Avengers Infinity War, where the whole universe was at stake. All the superheroes, well, things were happening to them and everything was really weighty and dramatic and everything was on the line. We move on to Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is a lot more light-hearted, a lot more fluffier in the Marvel world because it doesn't focus on a grand scale of something overly dramatic. It focuses on a man, a man who constantly does the wrong thing and is looking for redemption. And we have the hunt for a parental figure that was lost. And these are the, the main sort of the aspects of the story. This time, we have Scott, who after signing the Sokovia Accords, has been on house arrest for two years. He's coming very close to being out of that. And then we have Hank, who is working on a theory that his wife may still be in the quantum realm, but could possibly be saved with some, you know, technology that they just need to get the final parts of and hopes in there who is now the wasp and they reluctantly bring Scott back into the fold because they're kind of annoyed with him because he went away to uh, fight the, the Avengers and uh, kind of got caught for being the Ant-Man and, and they're kind of miffed with him for that. But they bring Scott back in and they kind of rekindle the relationships that they had and they go on the hunt. There is this ghostly figure who seems to be able to go through um, solid matter at will and who is more than a match for the Ant-Man and the Wasp and Hank and the full uh, police force, everybody that's after them. And that's the basic story. But what I like most about Ant-Man and the Wasp is that it doesn't feel weighty. It does feel rather light. It's comedic. It's fun. It's bright. It's colourful. And it is an easy to watch movie. Going from the, the Avengers Infinity War, which, like I said before, was hugely weighty, hugely influential in the universe, and then going to Ant Man and the Wasp feels right. It feels like a nice change of pace. It feels like taking a little bit of foot off of the gas and just relaxing and having some fun moments with these characters. And I do like all the characters in this movie. It has certain throwbacks to the first movie, especially with Michael Pena and him telling a story which. I thought was one of the best aspects of the first one. We get a lot more playful uh, banter with uh, Scott and the various characters. We get a lot more playfulness with the size options as well, going big, going small, the ramifications of that, the failure of Scott's suit, which leaves him in fairly funny predicaments. And I thought that it all worked in a general level. There was no problems, there was no issues I had with the story. We do have a contrivance of uh, Sonny's character, played by Walt Goggins, who is another man that just seems to turn up and cause problems. But again, I like the actor, I like the role, I like how it makes the story continually move forward, and it was fun. Like I said, I had lots of fun with the small and the big and the way they changed things about. Lots of little ideas that just seemed really neat and fun, like the fact that they had a Hot Wheels holder, where they had all these cars that could be miniaturised and made bigger at notice I thought that the banter particularly between Scott and Hope really grew throughout the movie as their relationship blossomed yet again uh, the acceptance of Hank of taking Scott back in this dealing with the quantum realm the, the introduction of old friends that Hank used to work with the ghost figure which I thought was a particularly good villain there was a reason behind what they were doing and again much like with Spider-Man it's not to destroy the world or to destroy people it's for a very particular purpose in this which is to save her own life she's doing this uh, for self benefiting reasons you know she wants to save herself and she's getting desperate and it's understandable and it's nice to have these villains that don't have world domineering ideas in their head it's just small stories that don't have lasting effect out with of this small area this small world that the movie has if you're a Marvel fan, you're probably going to go and see Ant-Man and the Wasp and I think you're going to have a good time with it. If you're expecting one of the sort of darker entries in the series, you're going heading into the wrong movie for this. If you're looking for answers as to what happened to Infinity War, you're going into the wrong movie because there is a, a little stinger, mid credit stinger, that lets you know that the events of this are happening just a few days before the events in Infinity War, which is all well and good. I thought Ant-Man and the Wasp was fun. It was bright, it was breezy, it was energetic, it was very funny and I had a lot of fun with it. I'll probably go back and check it out again. For me, it's easily a three and a half out of five movie. Just entertaining. I'd love to know what you thought of the movie. Let me know in the comment box below and I will see you next time.
on Mind vs. Film.